Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co, which I teach you. Huh? And Co, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today, we're going to cover a very widely discussed topic, which completes the Webflow Forms Masterclass series that I started many, many moons ago. Today, we're going to be covering validation. Yes, you heard it correctly. Proper form validation using JavaScript. We're going to cover a couple of methods to validate the data coming into your form, but also protect your form as well. So here we have a basic form. We've already kind of covered this, right? If you were to look back through the Webflow Forms Masterclass series, we already know how to read the values of your inputs. But in order just to make it crystal clear and to help you a little bit along that way, let's go through what we've done in the past already, but in the context of validating the form. So the first thing we want to do is actually just get our form going to go form just to show you I've, I've marked up the HTML there. I'll keep that there just for my own reference too. So we've got our form. It's really important that we bind a submit event listener because yes, a we could bind a click uh, to the submit button, but it's not, it's not capturing a submission of that form. It's just capturing the click. So what I mean by that, if I was to put hit enter on this form it's not capturing a click there's no click happening so we need to add the submit event listener on to this form and i think we've spoken about that in the past prevent default this will stop the form submitting and it allows us to do whatever it is that we want to so for console log and we take a look at that hit enter got our submit event um, and we can access various different uh, elements. Let's say we want our name, it's a bad example, but let's say we want our name to be at least three characters. Okay, so if we take our name field here, query selector, and then we go name equals name. You can you can get your element however the hell you want. I really don't mind. I, I think this is quite a nice way because there should really only be one name element on the page. You could scope this so it's even more specific. So inside of the form we query selector, I quite like that. Uh, but regardless, let's have a little look. If I console log our, i put our name there. Now we can go value, oh, save. We can get the value of our name. We can do so much with that now. Okay, we can we can go uh, dot length length. If I can spell length, three. So we could say if length is less than three, then. Uh, we should return because we want to stop the code progressing even further. But what I would probably do is I would create a um, errors array and I would push uh, errors dot push name should be longer than three characters. Okay. And then if errors.length, so if basically there's something in this array, then I would probably then return and do some error handling. So we could, if we go here and go uh, ul errors, I would go errors dot for each errors equal form dot query selector uh, errors errors dot inner html plus equals So 
So what we're doing, we're looping over each of the errors and adding an li inside of the um, error ul here. And we are basically inputting the, the actual text that's here inside of the li. So, oh, um, let's do that. And there we go. And this is now preventing that submission form. Now here you would have your Ajax uh, function that we've already covered, but let's talk about the three different kind of levels of form validation. The first one you've got is obviously in the HTML itself. So you can have this as required, calls required. Uh, you could have a pattern. This will be a regex. Right, and that says only numbers are allowed in this field and it will throw an error. That's another way to do it. So that's HTML validation. The next line of defense is the JavaScript validation, which is what we've spoken about on the right here. And then the last line of defense, which you have no control over inside of Webflow, is just back-end validation, basically. We could do as many uh, different types of validation here as we want. So we could do a match. We could do a regex to say, something like where well, we could do the same thing as we did just now we could only allow numbers so if there are no numbers then we say errors dot push name should contain numbers now this is a terrible example because numbers uh, a name shouldn't um involve numbers but you can see where we, i hope you can see where we're going with this that you're basically interrogating the value of the field now this is my way of doing it. I'll push it to a thing. If if there's no errors, so console.log, no errors. So we should only get to this point if all of the fields. So um, Sam, one, two, three, four. Oh, what an idiot. No errors. That's kind of a way to start to validate our form. So it never gets to the Ajax function by interrogating the value field, okay? I want to introduce you to a product that I've built with a good friend of mine. Heck, it's my channel. I'm responsible with my own products if I want. Journey for Clarity prompts you every day to answer three simple questions. What excited you today? What drained you? And what are you grateful for? And after four weeks, you're asked to reflect on your time and think about themes and trends that keep reoccurring and whether you feel good about them or bad about them. This encourages you to adapt your life and focus on what matters. And right now, we're actually crowdfunding in order to raise funds to build some exciting new features that we have planned for the product. So if you head down in the description below, there'll be more information on how to sign up. Thank you for supporting German for Clarity. I thank German for Clarity for sponsoring the channel. Oftentimes, a little reflection can go a long way. So along the same sort of lines as uh, validation is preventative methods to stop spam emails, right? And the easiest way we can do this is a thing called a honeypot. And what this is, it's a special field. It's by all means not foolproof because uh, spam bots will get more intelligent and various things like this. But it's a, it's a good starting point to actually uh, prevent unwanted submissions from spam. A recent article that I found, which I'll link to below, uh, actually says that they've had a lot of success using a honeypot. Let's jump in and implement a honeypot. All it is, it makes the space here, is an input field, like a, a checkbox input field, okay? Um, and we'll call it honey here. Um, some sort of message for accessibility users to say, do not check, check this box. Because the assumption is that spam bots will come onto your form field and fill out every single form element, right? Regardless of what it is, it will just try and fill it all out. So a human won't check this box, but a, a bot will. And now we want to actually hide this stuff. And we'll, I, I did a, did a uh, episode on SR only class a long, long time ago, but what it enables us to do is effectively just hide things visually, but then still allow them to be like visible. And they're putting a tab index of minus one as well. Let's take, let's get RSR only class. Let's, let's just take that CSS. 
Now you can see that our form field is effectively hidden. Now, all we're going to do is just say, uh, let's get our honeypot. Form dot query selector. Um, we're going to say if uh, honeypot. I think it's checked. Uh, errors dot push. Please do not check the box. Something like this. Looks like we need to clear that. So let's just. Cool. Please do not check the box. Now we have an error that says that they shouldn't check the box. We uncheck that, then the, the value should go. So that's the honey box technique. So now the, the other form which Webflow supports is the recapture. But Webflow have a great article on setting up the recapture. But if we are looking into the, if we, need, if we want to implement our own form and our own verification and validation, then we need to do a little bit extra with the JavaScript to make sure that we can uh, check the value of the recapture. And that is very simple. So this is the method we need here. And all it basically is, we just basically need to check if there is a response. We don't need to pass anything unless there are multiple recaptures on the page, then we need to give it the uh, recapture that we want it to check the the response from but we just need to simply say or if there's no response basically and that's pretty much it or if you don't have a honeypot um, please do not please uh, fill out the recapture that is form validation in a complete nutshell so if you do want to see more form um, implementations then do let me know check out the forms masterclass series i hope this brings it full circle and until next time happy no coding